Professor Clements with you as we again consider optics. Um, chapter 26 of OpenStax College Physics discusses the eye, microscopes, and telescopes. In this video, we will just concentrate on the eye. So look for the other videos for microscope and for telescopes. So we have a, uh, a need in our technological society to see small objects. Um, seeing that happens with our eye. Microscope will help us with that. Telescopes helps us see details on uh, dim objects. Those will, be, those will be our subjects for this uh, particular chapter. So a quick tour of the eye. You probably know more about this than I do. We will concentrate on the cornea being part of the lens forming, or sorry, the image forming mechanism, and the lens, of course, forming an image. And back here, the retina, where we want the image to be focused to clearly see the, uh, the object. We will not discuss the various details in the eye and really won't discuss cornea and, and lens separately uh, much at all. So we have a situation where we have some object that's closer than, you know, it's not to scale, uh, closer in this image than a real tree would be to your eye with the size of eye. But as the rays diverge from this object, the cornea and the lens converge the light and form an image back on your retina. And you will see this tree clearly if this image is in focus on your retina. We'll talk about the uh, cases of the image being f in, uh, focused in front of the retina or behind the retina, if it could continue. Um, so the eye being uh, relaxed here and viewing a very distant object. From a distant object, the rays come in pretty much parallel to each other. The cornea and the lens then focus the uh, image back on the retina. If we have an object that's close to us, then the rays are diverging and the uh, cornea and lens have to create a focused image for us to see clearly. So a little concept question here. Basically, the distance from the front of the eye to the retina is the same in both of these pictures. Uh, the distance to the eye, our eyes don't flex, uh, stretch out. So we have a constant image distance here. We have very different object distances. How is it that we're able to uh, have a focused image in both situations? If you imagine this uh, equation twice, once for a very distant object, once for a close object, so DO is changing, DI is constant. What does that tell you is happening in the eye to allow this focused image for far objects and for near objects? And you should be saying that the focal length is changing. The lens changes shapes. There's, there's mus there are muscles attached to the lens and the eye will uh, naturally try to get a focused image by using those muscles to distort the shape of the lens. And this is different than how a camera operates, uh, incidentally. So for a camera, we have a CCD material back here recording the light. Um, we have just a set of lenses here, and those lenses move in and out. If you watch a 35 millimeter camera, um, and a single lens reflex camera these days. And as the operator of that camera adjusts the focus, you'll see the lenses go out and in. Uh, so it's not quite like the eye, but the camera has a lens, the eye has a lens. Uh, the eye has an aperture. Your pupil will uh, open up in, in dim lighting situations, close down, just let a little bit of light through the eye in bright light situations. and that's uh, on the camera as well. So there, there's some uh, similarities with the uh, eye and with the camera, but also some important differences. Um, so this process of the lens changing shape, changing its focal length, is accommodation. And young people are better able to accommodate and change the shape of their lens than older individuals. Older individuals might wear bifocals or trifocals or progressive lenses with no line bifocals uh, because the lens is stiffer, the muscles are weaker, and uh, consequently the eye is not able to adjust the focal uh, length enough 
to both see distant objects and close objects. Um, so we'll talk about the vision correction in, uh, in just a little bit. So here we are with nearsighted eye at the top, farsighted at the bottom. Our problem with the nearsighted individual, here are rays coming from a very distant object. It's either the situation that the cornea and the lens have too much converging power and cause the light to be focused before it's back on the retina. So back here, the energy is going to be spread out from any point on the object and we'll get a blurry image. Or the eye perhaps is too long if the uh, cornea and lens are average uh, focal uh, length. Then our eye too long again causes the light to be focused before the retina would get a, a blurry image. In the case of farsightedness, <clears throat> then we have a situation where we see this parallel light coming in well, but objects that are close, now this light is diverging and the cornea and lens are not strong enough to converge the light back on the retina. Uh, of course, the image does not form back behind the eye. The retina is not transparent. Uh, but we have a situation for nearsightedness, I'm sorry, for farsightedness, uh, an object that's close can't be seen clearly, and we have the problem being this diverging light uh, cannot be brought to a focus at the proper point. The lens and cornea combination is too weak. So a little other drawing of this. Uh, again, our image here with the nearsighted eye we're forming in front of the retina. I'd like you to consider, um, before we give the answer, how is it that we can uh, correct this vision? How can we move the uh, image back to where it should be? And my uh, mouse wheel is uh, rolling us backwards here. But let's get back to our uh, situation here. So here we have the nearsighted eye. The image is being formed in front of the retina. What type of corrective lens can we put out in front of the cornea to cause the image to be focused on the uh, retina? And there must be a little time, uh, automated time setting on this PowerPoint. Sorry about that. But let's move on. So here's our, our diverging lens. That's going to move the image back. If our rays are a little bit more diverging, the strong cornea and lens combination uh, would form the image here. Because the diverging lens is in place, uh, that moves the image back a little bit onto the uh, uh, retina. Or the farsighted situation, we're too far back. How will we correct this? Uh, we need more converging power. So to correct that, we use a converging lens in front of the eye. And now the action of all three of these, converging lens, cornea, and lens in the eye, will bring the image to the proper focus. So how can you tell if you're wearing glasses, do you have converging lens or diverging lens uh, in your glasses? Well, you take your glasses off, and so don't do this if you're wearing contacts. Take your glasses off, um, see if you can form a real image of a light on a ceiling, um, and if you can, you have a converging lens. Or hold the lens close to paper, if it acts like a simple magnifier, you have a converging lens. If you hold your uh, glasses close to the paper and the print is smaller, then you have a diverging lens in your, uh, in your glasses. Uh, the lens themselves are rated in power. If you've had an eye exam and needed a prescription for lenses, uh, the optometrist or ophthalmologist will write down the power in diopters for the lens, the correction that you need in diopters. The diopter power is just one divided by the focal length in meters of the lens. One divided by the focal length in meters. And another option, perhaps, uh, laser surgery to reshape the cornea uh, using the laser with computer control in a safe environment, uh, trained individual operating it. You can make cuts in the cornea and when the cornea heals, it will have a different shape than uh, before the situation. And uh, perhaps you won't need any corrective lenses after that. 
So that's our situation with the eye. We have uh, a lens and cornea combination that are responsible for creating a focused image on the retina. Um, you perhaps will need corrective lenses if the uh, cornea and lens form an image too close or, uh, or too far away. And uh, by the way, there's a, a couple of terms, near point and far point. Uh, the near point is for your eye, how close can you bring the object and still see clearly? Uh, average uh, is about 25 centimeters. And the far point is how far away the object can be and still be seen uh, clearly. Uh, so there's near point, and there's far point, and uh, we'll do a, a calculation of how to calculate the uh, uh, corrective lens power for, uh, for those situations. So that's the eye. You should uh, read the book, answer all the questions in the reading guide if you're in Professor Clement's class, and uh, ask questions.